Campus climate represents norms of behaviors, interactions, and widely held attitudes on a campus um, as experienced by campus members. Scholars often use campus climate as a frame to deepen their understanding of campus unrest issues. For instance, those facing particular student populations, such as students of color on a predominantly white campus, but all campuses, regardless of their makeup um, um, and structures, have a climate that's made up of norms of interactions and practices um, um, of its members. And there are various components of, of campus climate. So it, it includes how people interact with one another, right. the quality of those interactions. Are people being validated and seen on campus? Are they being supported? What messages does the campus send people? Yeah, I think a lot of factors affect student of color well-being, and one of those is the campus climate, right, in terms of what's happening, not only in terms of like the administrative narrative around diversity and equity and inclusion, but what's happening on their floor in their dorm, what's happening in their classroom. Campus climate can affect student mental health, um, really, in my mind, in two ways. Um, one is on the kind of interpersonal day-to-day -day basis with things like microaggressions, um, which are basically micro insults um, where a person would treat a student of color in a negative or dismissive way. Um, another level, uh, the way that um, a campus climate um, can affect student uh, of color mental health is through some of the incidents that might occur on a campus and affect the campus on the whole. For instance, uh, the Charlottesville rally with people walking with torches through campus. And not only did the campus see that, but the whole nation did. And uh, it really underscored um, the, the severity of, of that image and, and um, just the reality of that act, um, creating fear. This can happen on two levels, you know, the everyday one-on-one, -on -one, uh, as well as the more global, where everyone gets to see it, but it still has uh, a devastating impact on the, the whole campus. I think oftentimes when we think of climate, um, it's easiest to think about those incidents of bias and discrimination, um, like a student's uh, hearing or um, being party to unkind remarks or bigoted statements or ad hominem attacks. I think it's a lot harder to be thoughtful about all the many ways in which students experience isolation and being excluded. So if we think about predominantly white campuses, for example, a student of color on that campus is likely to not see adequate reflections of themselves and the people that they interact with on a daily basis. And it becomes even more stark when they interact with professors because we know that professors are highly disproportionate in terms of race. About 70% of professors identify as white, which means only 30% identify as people of color. So if institutions do not recognize that there are campus climate issues that create divides between students as opposed to bridges or um, conduits of communication that are effective where students can authentically share about their experiences with each other, then the opportunities for learning and for building that cohesive community are missed. Um, if on a given campus that certain um, incidents of bias occur and then nobody does anything about that um, to you know rectify the situation or um, to, to bring the perpetrators to justice, that creates an environment in which the, the student of color would not feel safe, that somehow they're not valued enough um, that their safety in that space is, is taken care of, is, is monitored and, and addressed. And so if students are feeling invalidated, they're feeling as if they don't belong, if they're, if, they're, if they're feeling as if the institution doesn't truly see who they are, that can also have an impact on their dignity, which is an aspect that really hasn't been studied. But conceptually, what that would mean is that they start to not see themselves as worthy for being there, which might be a cause of them separating from that environment. 
which can then lead to the, dis to the disparities that we see in education where there are lower educational attainment rates for people of color as compared to their white counterparts. I think the University of Michigan and universities like the University of Michigan really have an obligation to those students who they've invited to their campuses to take care of them holistically. These are not just consumers of the education that we provide, but they're learners who are joining our community. So what does that mean fully? Um, we've asked them to be prepared to come to us and we need to be prepared for them to come to us. Um, so with all of that, I think there's um, an obligation for us to provide spaces where they do feel affirmed, where they don't feel like they're interrogated or questioned or um, their suspicion about their participation on campus. We need to provide spaces where there's people who understand their backgrounds and can help them make meaning of their transition from their communities to a campus like uh, the University of Michigan. I think there's also an obligation for us to have their education reflect their ambitions, their motivations, not just for a career, but how they might want to be in this world. So one of the key ways that we can support the healing of students of color is to do our work as faculty, as administrators, as people who have power on campus to create policy, norms, practices. Um, some of those are implementing an inclusive excellence framework for the entire institution, which recognizes that the structures and policies are often behind or instigate a lot of the issues that create a hostile campus climate. And so an inclusive excellence framework makes us interrogate our policies, makes us interrogate our structures. You know, the, the president of the university and the administration needs to make it clear, you know, how important the mental health and well-being of all students are on their campus, including students of color. And that pronouncement can be um, it can trickle down into the actual policies and practices of the university. What types of resources are available to ensure that students of color feel welcome? You know, what types of groups and spaces are made available for them? What types of personnel are put in leadership positions to ensure uh, that their needs are met? I think the point there is to say that as, as faculty, as administrators, as people who are anchors in an institution, it's somewhat our responsibility to help students get the common language, the common knowledge of history around dynamics and of race and racism so that they can be more well-versed and understand how it impacts their daily lives and have a better appreciation for how all of us have a role in improving campus climate. So why is it worth it to work on campus climate? An unfortunate reality is that acts of hate, racism, sexism, and other isms will continue to occur in our society nationally, and some will trickle into our college campuses. But by establishing a positive campus climate, we can actually reduce the incidence of these types of events. And when they do occur, that having a positive climate can allow people to have a sense of community, a sense of solace, and a sense of support that allows them to continue to thrive and meet the goals that they've set for themselves. In contrast, by having a negative climate, we can actually exacerbate the negative impacts of societal hate, racism, hate acts, and other types of isms on the lives of students um, and other community members on our campuses and in fact, it can undermine the actual efforts that we're doing on our campuses to improve climate. So creating a positive climate is actually creating a psychologically resilient climate for all of us.